Dr. Gabrielle Foreman and her graduate students, Jim Casey and Sarah Patterson, created an online archive that highlights early black organizing. The Color Conventions Project is a digital humanities project that brings buried 19th century African American history to digital life for large audiences. In the 1800s, delegates met in state, national, and local conventions to discuss issues that mobilize them. Issues like education, labor, and access to justice. They often met in African Methodist Episcopal churches like this one. The first convention took place in Philadelphia in 1830, and the last one happened in Macon, Georgia in 1888. The movement began when a group of around a thousand black people traveled from Ohio to Canada after facing violence from the local community. In Canada, planning began for the first convention. It's this, again, a wide swath of communication in the 1830s, right, um, that allowed people in Philadelphia to say, we've got to address the violence against African American communities. And delegates were chosen from local communities, so they represented those local churches, those local organizations, those local literary societies. The meetings were open to the public and posted about beforehand in newspapers. All that is left of the meetings are the written minutes. But Foreman says that historians can deduce quite a lot just from that. The 1873 Delaware Convention is an, is an educational convention. It speaks about educational injustice the ways in which African Americans pay taxes but don't have um, access to schooling, um, to schools, to public schooling. And we know from knowing our Delaware history that particularly um, in, uh, in southern Delaware where this was, uh, was hosted at Wacote, uh, which is an ongoing church, it still exists today um, at, at Wacote Church, um, that there were not public schools, high schools, available for African Americans until the 1950s. So we have people living today who are in their 80s and 90s who were not um, able to go to high school without paying to do so um, at Dell State's academy. Um, so that kind of disenfranchisement educationally is ongoing in Delaware's history. But in 1873, you have the delegates coming together in order to discuss this. An exhibit on that particular convention is forthcoming, but Foreman says no one even knew about that convention until she found out about it from the Delaware Historical Society. Even though famous abolitionist and writer Frederick Douglass spoke at several conventions and the grandfathers of Langston Hughes and W.E.B. Du Bois were delegates, Foreman says the movement has remained fairly invisible in popular history. It's a hidden movement that hasn't reached the kind of predominance the kind of stature that the abolitionist movement and the anti-slavery and underground railroad movement has. One of the reasons we might uh, argue that that is the case is because there's an interracial partnership both in the abolitionist movement and in the underground railroad movement which sometimes gets represented as white allies and supporters who through the noblesse oblige and the largesse of their generosity helped victims. Um, but the color conventions movement really highlights black agency, black leadership, black organizational power. Although the movement has struggled to find a place in history books, the conventions made things happen. In Mobile, Alabama, for example, delegates helped form Talladega College. Other conventions worked to gather crucial population data. They reported out census-like data before censuses were taking data on African Americans. So we have, for example, charts and graphs that highlight the black occupations. We know about barbering, we know um, about preaching, we know about a select number of black occupations, but the breadth and the width of the work that was being done, the labor that was being done, and the capital production, the amount of money that they were worth, which they're also reporting out on, is really pretty breathtaking. Now, Dr. Foreman's graduate students and undergraduate students are trying to illustrate these early data gathering techniques through charts and graphs. Foreman says echoes of these minutes can be heard in the socio-political discourse of today. 
She says one can see antecedents of the Black Lives Matter movement in conversations of convention goers who were concerned about police presence and legal constrictions on African Americans. This movement speaks to the ongoing issues, what is often considered to be the changing same, as the saying in African American communities, that speak to literally today when um, Freddie Gray, for example, is being buried just down the street in Baltimore after being killed um, in a police car um, because he looked at a officer before he ran away. So there's no reason that we know that he was actually arrested. This speaks to the 19th century, to impudence, right, and the kinds of charges against black agency and black presence that were criminalized. Um, and so this kind of resonance between the 19th century and today, between organizational history and today's impetus for organizing in black communities. The Colored Conventions Project engages undergraduates as well to create pages about certain historically overlooked people of color whose presence impacted the social landscape of the time. Elizabeth Gloucester, for example, was one of the richest women in the 19th century, but she's a little known figure. At last week's convention, an entire presentation was devoted to her life and influence. And while many of the minutes are in the process of being transcribed by members of the AME Church and other community stakeholders, the Colored Conventions Project is working on a fully searchable database. Transcribes Minutes is one of the initiatives of the project. It allows us to have the minutes that we have listed to be fully searchable. Um, so if you're interested in, let's say, an ancestor or a historic figure, you would be able to search through all of the minutes that we have put up in order to find that history. Or if you're interested in a building, for example, um, or, a, um, or music, or how song is connected, or how hymns are connected to the Colored Conventions Project, you can search for those things. Colored Conventions is also creating a church curriculum, resources for schools, and looking to further their partnerships with national organizations. Ultimately, the project's huge database has the potential to enable a multitude of people to understand black history in a different way. But perhaps the most important mission of the project is offering historical context, showing that black organizing and activism dates back to a time when slavery was still legal in the United States. For Delaware Public Media, I'm Ann Hoffman. Burr, burr.